Hello and welcome to a walkthrough of the Data X-ray platform and what it can bring to your organisation. We'll start with browsing our data sources. Here we can see we've got a number of different data sources, Amazon S3 buckets, uh, Azure Network File Share and some SharePoint information. We can see how many files each has got and how many we've successfully scanned. And we can walk into any of these environments. Immediately you'll see what the data source is, what we know about it, and we can start seeing how many files are in there and what data we've located in those files. So for example, here we have a number of files, 34 out of the 45 files have organizational data in them. 29 have URLs, 26 have rela data related to people, for example. And you can see by the different colors, the different types of that data. So general data, sensitive PII type data, we can see where we've got financial data, et cetera, in there as well. These rules can be set by going to those data source settings, where we can actually pick which rules we want to scan that environment for. So we can tailor the scan we're going to do on any particular data source to your requirements. We can also choose if we're going to permanently monitor that situation and constantly recrawl for new and adjusted files, or if we're going to do a one-time scan. And we can schedule when that scanning will occur as well. So if you want to do it out of hours, that can also be achieved. If you choose to, we can also index that data. So that means we'll actually take a copy of the data that we've scanned and hold it in an encrypted database for later searching. So this might be if you wish to use that as a searchable database for data for analytics, or if you wanted to be able to look up a particular customer name across a data set, maybe for data subject access requests or items like that. You can also tune this to be between certain dates, certain file limits, and certain file types. So let's go back to our data source. As long as seeing, as well as seeing what types of data are in there, we can also go down and actually see the data themselves, look at what goes into a particular file. So here we've got a CV, for example, which is people, email addresses, postal codes, gender information, all that data is withheld within there. Now for some users, that's all they'll be able to see is the metadata about what we've located. If you're an administrator and have a sufficient privileges, you can actually go into these files and actually download them and visibly annotate that data as well. So here I've downloaded that file back into the system so we can annotate where we're finding names, email addresses, organizational data as well. Or we can see a highlight of all the different types of data we've located, every name we've located, every email address. All of that can be brought to light so you can see exactly what's triggered the rules. Or if you're an administrator looking for a particular piece of data, this can also be used to gain that data firsthand as well. If we go back to our browse, the same is across all of those different data sets. That data can also be made searchable. As I've said, we can index that data. So if I look at, for example, example.com email addresses, I can search for that and find any indexed data source where that data exists. So it exists in both of these two documents, and we can see what examples of that data exist in there. If we're pulling from a data source that supplies that sort of information as well, we can actually search across that data source, such as SharePoint, and find what other metadata we've got against that file as well. So in files here, not only can we look at contents, but we can also look at true metadata, the size of the file, when it was last modified, when it was last scanned, who owns that file, who else has permissions to that file. So by using search algorithms to work on both content and the metadata of the file, we can find the data that really matters to you in any particular search instance. But we've looked at the rules that are on there, PII, GDPR, financial data, but what if those rules don't cover everything you need? Well, in our rules section, you can add your own. A number of them come straight out of the box, things like sensitive PII, religious beliefs, political beliefs, gender, standard regular expressions to be able to locate things like credit cards, dates, prices, IP addresses, and our natural language processors, which allow us to look at the contents of our document, context it in, and find things such as where a name is likely to be in a sentence, 
so that we don't have to have dictionaries of every name in the world, as obviously that's impossible, be able to look at the context of that data and where it lives within a document will give us a really good indication of where we're going to find those bits of information about people or phone numbers. If you wish to make your own rule at the top, you absolutely can. So we can create a new rule. That could either be a dictionary or a regular expression type rule, and that can be classified as the type of data you want it to be. So whether that's confidential, financial, personal, you can write your own rules to create that data types as well by creating the rule and then putting the entries you want in the dictionary or creating a regular expression in there as well. So you can always find the data that matters to you. Once we've found that data, we may wish to label it. So to further our classification, we can do things such as smart labels, where in a particular data source, I can actually say, if a document has certain types of data in it combined, such as emails, and people together, for example, I could mark that as a different type of document, so, than I would do if it only had one of those two items in it at that particular time. So by analyzing what types of data and what types of metadata exist on that file, we can then tag it appropriately to identify types of file or certain security levels of content or certain items which may be of interest for analytical purposes based around the metadata and the contents of that file combined together to form us a labeling st structure that will tell us exactly what type of document they are for what we need to do to them. Finally, once we've actually found that relevant data, we can build case files. A case file is an area we can store files in to then later interact with them, either export them or redact them. So if I go back to my search example and I look for my example email addresses, I can find my two files, I can select them, I can add them to my case file. That's now gonna take them to that special bit of storage for me. If I go in, I can see my two files. Now I have a couple of options. I can export them raw. So maybe I want to export them to put them in front of a data steward to say, this is the type of data we found in your environment. Is this correct? Should you be holding this? Is this appropriate? Or I can choose to redact that data as well. So if I wanted to present that data to a data scientist and make it safer, I could strip out things like email addresses or by adding my own redactors, any type of that sensitive data I want. So. So I might choose to create one that gets rid of my PII. I can then go in there and add the rules I want to remove. So maybe I'm going to add, remove emails. I'm going to remove people as well. And we can go through and select any rules we want to add. Generally seems like a sense for one, etc. We can choose to select what we're going to replace those with as well. By default, we'll star it out. But if you wanted to replace that text with a particular piece of text, we can do that as well. The rules also can allow for a second pass of data. So for example, if we've removed email addresses, well, we can only know what those email address names before the at sign were, and we might want to remove the initials of those names, or we might want to remove the names we found as emails if we found them in plain text in the rest of the document as well. So by taking the details we found in that first pass redaction, we can also then add that and remove other references in the document to make sure we're really making sure we're getting rid of all that sensitive data where it lies in there. We can also add a dictionary or a regular expression to say, if we find this particular data, maybe our own company's phone number or address or names of our staff, don't remove those because they're not PII. We're not worried about redacting those. So we can add certain types of data, just be left alone inside those instances. Then with that, we can simply manage our exports, for example, create that redaction, remove those sensitive PIIs, and then choose to automate that redaction and even get redaction reports about exactly what was removed from there. So this has been a quick walkthrough of what Data X-Ray can provide. The ability to understand your data sources, down to what type of data lives within them, even down to what type of data is specifically within a certain file. 
So going into that file and actually seeing the entire contents that have triggered those rules. Our ability to search that data, either through simple plain text searches where we're going to select a piece of data and search for it across our estate if that data has been indexed, or we can add other things such as metadata onto there as well to actually really get down to the data that matters to us. Our ability to create our own custom rules, to actually add rules which are going to represent the data that matters to us, not just the pre-built rules out of the set, and our ability to then label those files based around the data we've found. So we can actually break up those documents and then react to them in any particular way we need to by labeling them based on content and metadata. And then finally, when it comes time to, we can extract that data to put it in front of relevant parties, be that the data stewards who might need to see the type of data they're holding to make intelligent decisions about it, or to external parties, or to data scientists who may need that only in a redacted form where that can be then managed safely using our export and redaction features. Hopefully that's given you a good overview. If you'd like to see a demo or if you have any further questions, please help. Uh, please reach out to us for help. Thank you.